What's up, YouTube? Defragging here. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been releasing videos lately, especially guides. I haven't been releasing many guides at all, mainly because one, I'm still waiting um on the TGM partnership. I'm in their queue still. YouTube said that they were going to be partnering faster, and I was on the list, but I don't know. I guess here in the next five or four days, I should be partnered. Hopefully, we'll see. Also, an update. I changed, or a faction changed. My Orc Death Knight is now a human Death Knight uh, for two reasons. One, the horde on our server is terrible. We only control Baird and Hold like maybe three or four times out of the week, the entire week. So I was getting frustrated with not being able to do Baird and Hold runs. So switch to the Alliance. Hopefully I'll be able to get some better arena partners as well and get my rating up higher. Secondly, because, in my opinion, the human racial is the best PvP racial in the game. Alright, getting into this guide, it is an uh, in-depth guide on controlling your pet, since Unholy Death Knights rely very highly on their pet's abilities. Uh, the first macro that I use, I'm going to go over, is basically about your gargoyle. Your gargoyle copies your stats, so depending on your stats... Um, it determines how powerful your gargoyle is going to be. So you want to basically use any kind of buff before summoning your gargoyle so that you have better stats to give your gargoyle better stats. So I have a macro right here. It'll use your trinket, your racial, if you have one that's worth using, like uh, Blood Fury. It'll use your Unholy Frenzy and then summon your gargoyle. People argue you to use Unholy Frenzy separately, like on your ghoul or your gargoyle, so that you don't have to take the damage. But it's a very minor damage, and it's a lot more beneficial if two of you get the buff, since you use it on yourself, and your gargoyle copies your stats, or whether uh, rather than just one. Plus, your rune cooldown is a lot more helpful whenever that's on, because of the haste increase. The next macro is a ghoul sacrifice macro. Since... Unholy Death Knights always have their ghoul out. Their ghoul summon uh, move uh, ability is usually always off cooldown. So that way, you can death pack your ghoul, get the health, and then instantly summon a ghoul in its place. Here's the macro for that. The next macro I'm going to go over is a ghoul claw toggle. Now, a lot of people argue to have your claw ability turned off so that your ghoul keeps his energy and saves it so you can use your gnaw ability when you want to to get in that three or four second stun depending on if dark transformation is on but claw does a really good amount of damage i've seen it hit anywhere from eight to thirteen k crits with uh, dark transformation up on my ghoul so claw is too valuable to not use at all so here's a macro and what it does is it toggles which one you have on or which one you have off. So what it will do is since you should start out with claw on and gnaw turned off, it will switch. So it'll turn your claw off and turn your gnaw on. And as soon as your ghoul, uh, ghoul has enough energy to use gnaw, it will. And then as soon as it uses it, you switch the, or hit the macro again and it will switch it back so that it's using claw again. This next macro is a ghoul huddle macro. So a lot of times, especially whenever, say, a a mage you're fighting can't hit you because either you're in an anti-magic zone or you've got an am shell up they'll switch to your ghoul to try and get your ghoul down because your ghoul does do a decent amount of damage and it has a very useful stun so a lot of times whenever they focus target your ghoul you want your ghoul to be able to live through whatever they're throwing at you until they pretty much just give up or you kill them or whatever but this will Make your ghoul use its huddle ability. Really simple macro, and here it is. Another thing I'm gonna wanting to kind of go over in this video is I see a lot of people leaving comments that Unholy is not a burst spec and that you can't burst with it. That is completely not true. And they say that Frost is better burst damage. That is also not true. Um, here's how I burst a target quickly. Uh, basically, you start the fight. You use two festering strikes to turn your blood and your frost runes into unholy runes or death runes. Once they're death runes, you use outbreak to get your diseases on the target. Then use two scourge strikes. After all your runes are depleted, you want to use your empower rune weapon to get all your runes back. And then you want to blow all your cooldowns, your trinket, racial, unholy frenzy, and summon gargoyle. 
and as soon as you do that, just spam Scourge Strike on the target, or if it's a healer, Necrotic Strike, but after you start using Scourge Strike, you can use it a good eight times, that sounds about right, because by the time you go through your two Unholy Runes, then all your Death Runes, your two Unholy Runes are back, so that's eight Scourge Strikes. With all your buffs up, your cooldowns, everything, it doesn't take, but five seconds in order to uh, get to the point to where you use your cooldowns so I've bursted well over 30k DPS with this people that say unholy is not a burst spec you're wrong just plain and simple wrong you can burst with unholy but that's all I'm going to cover in this video I'm going to be releasing more videos for unholy death knights and how to play it with them and against certain classes uh, Please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the section below. So say like, I don't know, video uh, video ideas or anything. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.